Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, vapor pressure, Raoult's law, and then also give some definitions for dew point, boiling point, uh, absolute and relative humidity, and then also degrees uh, superheat. Okay, and then we'll go over just a couple examples today um, that are also related to the homework. Okay, so Raoult's law is uh, this expression where, well, you know, yi is going to be the vapor mole fraction. Okay, vapor mole fraction. This is the uh, total pressure. Um, this is the liquid mole fraction. And that is the vapor pressure of the liquid. Okay, so that's the liquid uh, vapor uh, pressure. Okay, so what this relationship uh, details is um, the, really what we're trying to find is the, the relationship between the liquid mole fraction and the vapor mole fraction. Okay, so uh, for pure component, uh, one species, that's what we talked about last time. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, one liquid and two plus gas species. Okay, and then uh, on the next class period, we're gonna be talking about two plus liquid species and two plus gas species. So very multi-component for both the liquid and the gas phases. Okay, and then um, we're gonna talk about, for example, air, water um, uh, for today's class. Okay, so think of a, a sponge, um, and uh, what's the maximum amount of water um, that the sponge can hold? And we could call that maybe saturation. Okay, saturate, the sponge is saturated with water. It can't hold any more water. And the same thing happens with um, you know, water vapor in air as well. Uh, it, it, you get to a point where it can't hold any more water in vapor in the air. Okay, so what happens when the air becomes saturated with water vapor? So any additional water starts to condense and form liquid water droplets, okay, in the air. Or it condenses in, onto a uh, colder surface that might be nearby. Okay, so, um, so the dew point is the point at which the first drop condenses. Okay, so you have, uh, you know, water vapor, okay, in the air, and then that's going to start to aggregate and form a water droplet. Okay, so it goes from vapor to liquid. The very first point that that starts happening is called the, the dew point. Okay, and then the saturation point, and hence the dew point, is a function of temperature. Okay, so the hotter the temperature, uh, you, know, um, you know, so as you, as you cool down in temperature, you're going to get to a dew point. It's going to be a temperature. Okay, and it's related to the vapor pressure. So dew point is when the first drop condenses. Okay, this is a spider web, and you can see you know, early morning, often the temperature drops outside, and so the uh, air is completely saturated with water, and it's going to start condensing on things like um, you know, spider webs. Okay, so it's saturated uh, air, and it occurs when the mole fraction, okay, in the vapor times the total pressure equals the saturated vapor pressure. Okay, and uh, examples, you know, if you know yi and p total, you can calculate um, this, uh, this vapor pressure and then calculate the corresponding temperature. Okay, because vapor pressure is a function of temperature. So if you know this at a particular value, okay, so let's say this is uh, you, you've uh, been able to calculate this from yi uh, p total, um, and you know this number, um, then uh, you can go and calculate the, the temperature. Okay, so if you know that you're at the dew point temperature, you can calculate uh, yh2o as well um, from this, the, this, uh, this vapor pressure and also the total pressure. So you can know what mole fraction of water you have in the vapor phase. Okay, so how do you quantify the amount of moisture in the air? And so we're just gonna go over a couple um, you know, terminology items. Um, and this could be the mole or mass fraction of water in the air. So relative humidity, that's gonna be this partial pressure divided by the uh, vapor pressure. Okay, so for water, that's gonna be just the partial pressure of water divided by the vapor pressure, okay, and that's like a percent of saturation, kind of like our sponge. 
if we had, uh, you know, we could still hold 50% more water in that sponge than we'd be at 50% saturation. But also in the air, we could have like 50% humidity. So that's 50% of the moisture the air can hold at that temperature. Um, one of the things to note is that this quantity here in the denominator, that is a function of temperature. And saturation occurs when we have 100% relative humidity, or there's no more water vapor that the air can hold. Absolute humidity, on the other hand, is the mass of the vapor divided by the mass of dry gas. Okay, it's a little bit weird, um, but we're just gonna go with that definition. Okay, boiling point, um, it's, okay, so it, as opposed to dew point, where the first droplet of a liquid starts to form, the boiling point is kind of the opposite, okay, where you start with a liquid, and it's where the first bubble of vapor appears in the liquid. Okay, so that's gonna be the, the boiling point. And essentially, you have, uh, you know, just right at that interface, you're gonna have, you know, the, the mole fraction of the liquid and the vapor are gonna be equal to one right at that uh, interface, okay? And that is when uh, this, this uh, vapor pressure, the liquid vapor pressure, uh, is going to equal the, the total pressure, okay? And then degrees superheat, uh, we also wanted to find this as well, is how far you have to cool the gas to condense the first drop of liquid. So how many degrees you're above the dew point, okay? And that's the degrees superheat, is whatever temperature you are right now, how many degrees would you have to start, you know, would you have to cool that to get down to the dew point, and that is uh, degrees superheat. Okay, so what if, what if the, um, the partial pressure is greater than the liquid vapor pressure? And, and what we call is that is a super saturated or the relative humidity is greater than 100%. And this is a system that's not at equilibrium. Okay, so it's eventually gonna get back to equilibrium. It's a metastable state and the liquid will condense out of the gas phase. And then, uh, so it's gonna change back, okay, to the saturation point where the partial pressure is gonna be equal to the liquid uh, vapor pressure. Okay, so a couple of examples, um, you know, BYU heating plant, okay? So um, we have, uh, you know, here's a heating plant where you have uh, natural gas or coal-fired uh, boilers, and then around campus you have a loop Okay, and that goes off to heat exchangers in individual buildings um, that are heated or uh, dur during the, uh, the summer they're cooled. Okay, they send around a cool loop. Uh, but let's just uh, do this for um, the, uh, this heated loop. And this, this water is at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And so they have to maintain this uh, as a pressurized loop to keep it as, as liquid. Okay, now let's say, um, you know, there's a rupture in the line, for example, then it would start to, it would start to boil because the pressure would be reduced to atmospheric pressure and the temperature would start to boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It would start to flash off uh, the steam. So where is, where is the boiling point in Provo? Okay, it actually isn't going to be 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be a little bit lower because, um, you know, the pressure in Provo might be, for example, you know, 0.86 atmospheres because we're at uh, 4,500 feet of elevation. Okay, and so it's gonna actually boil at a lower temperature. So how would you figure that out? Um, what we would do is, is get our um, saturated vapor pressure as a function of temperature and set that equal to 0 0.86 and then solve for the temperature at which uh, that would be equal to 0 0.86. Okay, um, relative humidity in Virginia, for example, uh, we can go through a couple other examples, but um, you know this is gonna be at, at sea level, okay? And uh, we can calculate things like the, the partial pressure of water, the mole fraction of water, and also the degree superheat, okay? So if it's not currently condensing, how many degrees you would have to cool that off where you would first see the first drop of dew, um, like in the morning. Okay, and then, uh, you know, rain in the mountains as well.
you know, you have uh, different elevations, different temperatures, okay? And so you may have uh, more rain in the mountains because it's uh, colder temperatures um, as those clouds are thrust up um, and uh, the pressure decreases, uh, then you might uh, condense more and that's why you might have more rain. Okay, so uh, Raoult's Law, um, so let's just review this then. We have Raoult's Law. This is a simplified form of uh, a full uh, vapor liquid equilibrium. Okay, so this is a VLE. Uh, this is a full one with a pointing correction. Uh, you know, we call this, um, well, you have a lot of extra terms here, okay, that uh, you'll get to later, um, you know, with some activity coefficients and uh, you have some some other terms that uh, are also for, for non-ideal cases, okay? And we'll be able to calculate those later. But just for now, we're going to go back to just this simplified form. Uh, these other values are going to be uh, equal to 1, okay? We're just going to set those equal to 1 and get back to our simplified uh, Raoult's Law. Okay, so for single component, if we do our degrees of freedom analysis, which is 2, uh, plus the number of components minus the number of phases and that gives us one degree of freedom so we can specify you know something about this uh, you know we, oh, we already have the mole fractions uh, but we can specify either temperature or pressure and be able to calculate the other one we reviewed in prior lectures pressure versus temperature graph and also pressure versus volume graph um, let's say you have two plus components in the gas. Okay, so that's going to be the number of species there, and that's how many degrees of freedom you have. So you may have to specify temperature, pressure, or some of your uh, species, uh, mole fractions in the vapor. Okay, and then the dew point is going to occur at uh, this TDP, and that's when the first liquid condenses, and there you have uh, saturated uh, vapor. And then boiling is going to occur when uh, P total equals this uh, liquid vapor pressure. And uh, like single component saturated liquid, um, you know, it's going to be the same thing as for uh, this case. Okay, um, and then relative humidity, just a couple of definitions. Um, you know where it's going to be the partial pressure divided by the the uh, vapor pressure, and you're saturated when the relative humidity equals 100. Okay, and this is absolute humidity, as we talked about. Just a definition for that. And then when we get to uh, two plus components in the liquid, we're going to be covering this next time. Um, and then we also have number of species, degrees of freedom. And uh, we're going to use Raoult's Law to help us calculate this. We may have to calculate uh, you know, a number of equations and variables uh, simultaneously. And uh, again, the first drop of liquid equals the dew point, And the first bubble of gas is going to be the bubble point. And uh, you know, really, there's no... Um, you know, boiling point defined because the temperature is going to change as those lighter components um, are boiled off. Okay, so just a preview of some of the upcoming homework problems. Um, we're going to have the uh, the breathing. Okay, so uh, how much you know, water is going to be lost? Uh, relative humidity coming out of a breath of. Okay, and so here's a strategy. Um, go ahead and pause this if you need a little bit more time with this. Um, I won't spend a lot of time here. But again, this is the next problem, and here is a strategy uh, for this uh, this calculation. Okay, and then we're also going to do um, the 627, and again, here is a strategy for solving this problem. Okay, so that concludes this discussion of um, you know just with we focus today on uh, air and water. Um, and next time we'll focus on multi-component in the liquid and also multi-component in the vapor.